sooner or later therefore the congress will have to decide the northwest monsoon as i call it narendra modi's personality cult towers over all else the views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization my weekly video blog whereas the title suggests i comment with a straight bat now in the last few weeks there's been this drum beat up ki bar 400 par the bjp is talking of crossing 400 in the 2024 lok sabha election now all of that may be a lot of hype but you know what the real question of 2024 is can an enfeebled congress actually cross at least 54 seats this time which will enable it to get the status of the leader of the opposition that my friends is the real question not 400 par but actually 50 ya 54 pass 54 pass now you might think that's uh, again uh, putting down the congress but the truth is recall the 2014 lok sabha elections where the congress ended with its lowest ever tally in a lok sabha poll of just 44 seats 2019 was only marginally better the congress then won 52 seats with kerala and tamil nadu here in alliance with the dmk providing some southern comfort in 2024 too most opinion polls now suggest that the congress will be hard pressed to enter triple digits and actually enter double digits in any state barring kerala and possibly telangana the northwest monsoon as i call it that swept the bjp to power in both previous occasions in 2014 and 19 threatens to do so again in a vast belt stretching from the western seaboard of goa down to the hindi heartland leaving the congress floundering in 2019 for example the congress won just 6 i repeat 6 out of 243 seats in 10 states across the northwest belt of the country now let me be fair here to the new congress or the rahul gandhi congress the congress's decline didn't begin in 2014 with the rise of prime minister modi the congress hasn't won a simple majority in the lok sabha since the massive sympathy wave that it got in 1984 in the aftermath of indira gandhi's assassination in the 40 years since the congress has crossed the 200 seat mark only twice its best showing coming in 1991 when rajiv gandhi's tragic assassination in the middle of an election campaign changed the election narrative the only other occasion has been in 2009 when dr manmohan singh's leadership received a qualified endorsement so over 40 years only twice has the congress crossed 200 seats but even beyond the shrinking numbers my friends the nagging question is simply this what has the congress done in the past decade to make itself more electable and make itself a party of at least triple digits congress leaders will point to the institutional capture be it the election commission the enforcement directorate courts or dare i say of course even the media as proof that there isn't a level playing field in an indian election anymore you've seen what happened in a mayoral poll in chandigarh where a presiding officer virtually rigged the poll or operation lotus like moves to topple elected governments the brazen misuse of state power has undoubtedly given the bjp an edge over its political rivals but what about the introspection that the congress must do how much has the congress contributed to its own demise with its inability to build itself as an attractive and cohesive alternative rahul gandhi is on another yatra now a yatra bharat jodo nyay yatra is a laudable exercise in reestablishing a mass connect which the party has lost in recent times but the truth also is episodic experiments cannot compensate for years of organizational neglect at times therefore rahul gandhi looks like a valiant but rather confused camp captain on a creaking ship in the midst of turbulent waters while the captain is determined to sail on regardless which many will see as an act of courage it is really foolhardy to expect this ship to stay afloat when the parts are beginning to fall off 
Similarly, the party president Malikarjun Kharge has made a genuine effort to be more accessible and even interact with block level workers. But does he have at the age of 80 the stamina or dare I say even the authority for a prolonged fight against the BJP? Ironically, and this is an interesting statistic, there are as many as eight sitting chief ministers in the country today who were once in the Congress. There are at least 13, one, three former Congress chief ministers who have left the party in the last decade alone. That's right, 13 in the last decade. In many cases, this can be attributed to vaulting ambition. In some cases, it is what I call the rising sun, the Ukta Suraj syndrome to be on the right side of power. In some instances, it is the obvious fear of enforcement agency action, which leads to a departure. But there is also a growing disconnect, my friends, between the party's status quo central leadership and restive state units that has spurred periodic acts of rebellion. For example, a Jyotiraditya Sindhya in Madhya Pradesh, a Hemanto Biswa Sarma in Assam quit the party after they lost out to an older guard that was unwilling to cede power to Gen Next leaders. A pragmatic and accommodative big tent approach that once managed competing interests within the Congress has now been replaced by a more inflexible them versus us tug of war where a small coterie within the Congress leadership calls the shots. Now in a speech at a Jaipur conclave of the Congress in 2013, Rahul Gandhi spoke of power as poison. What he was forgetting is he was addressing a party whose core identity is driven by the power principle. Satta mein rehna hai. We want to stay in power. The BJP, by contrast, is a political wing of an ideological force called the Sangh Parivar or the RSS. It is this kader based brotherhood in saffron that holds the BJP together through good times and bad. When the party, for example, just won two seats in 1984, there was no mass exodus from the BJP and the leadership remained intact. Now, when Narendra Modi's personality cult towers over all else, there may be rumblings in private over what is happening in the party, over the highly centralized decision making. But no one dare rebel against the diktats that come from above. The recipe for a Congress revival is not to become more authoritarian like this new BJP, but it is actually to become more inclusive like an old Congress. This means creating more avenues to kickstart the careers of younger leaders, particularly at the state level, who have shown the appetite for a tough battle. What does the Congress do instead? It relies on what I call the tired, fossilized geriatrics. A Revan Reddy in Telangana is a good example of how an empowered 54-year-old leader was able to inspire the Congress by leading from the front and leading them to victory. Now, who is to say that if you projected a Sachin pilot in Rajasthan or even a Shashi Tharoor in Kerala or dare I say invested in much younger leaders in a Maharashtra or a Madhya Pradesh, it, may not, it will not deliver similar results in the future. In all of this, there is as always an elephant in the room, Rahul Gandhi and the Gandhi Parivar. Let's be honest, my friends. The family surname today on its own is subject to diminishing returns outside the traditional Congress faithful echo chambers. If, as opinion polls predict, there will be a third big Lok Sabha defeat that the Congress will suffer, truth be told, it would be catastrophic because it will only accelerate the distinct breakup of a once dominant force and that thereby weaken the opposition in this country. Let's be also honest. The belief that the Gandhis are the only glue that holds the Congress together has been shaken by a number of high-profile departures in the last decade, many of them of people who were considered close to the Gandhi family. Sooner or later, therefore, the Congress will have to decide. Can the Congress bank on a family 
Can the party rely on a family that isn't quite a vote catcher any longer? Or should that umbilical cord finally be severed between the party and a family? 2024, my friends, is an acid test for the Congress's immediate future. As a postscript, at a time when a guessing game is going on in Delhi, ki kaun jayega Congress se, who will leave the Congress next? Let me tell you an interesting story. I was at a, a lunch being thrown by Abhishek Manu Singhvi, the Congress leader. And Malikarjun Kharge was surrounded by several senior congressmen. One of them then turned to Kharge ji and said, Namaste sir, I go. And uh, a journalist who was there quipped, Kaha ja rahe ho? Leaving the lunch or you are leaving the Congress party? Think about it. That was the straight bat. Do of course uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.